okay, we back in Jersey. Been a while since we came out here, and we have many more stories to tell. We are not going to waste any time, let's get into it. While incarcerated in the Maryland State Correction System between approximately 2003 and 2012, Shady, also known as White Boy, became a member of the Treetop Piru set of the Blood Street Gang. Originally formed in Compton, California, the Treetop Piru spread through the Maryland State Prison System beginning in the early 2000s. After his release from prison in approximately April 2012, Shady formed and led the Shady DTE a large and sophisticated drug distribution organization that obtained, transported and distributed large amounts of cocaine, heroin, fentanyl and marijuana. Shady used his leadership status in the treetop Pyro Bloods to assist him with obtaining suppliers, recruiting and controlling enterprise members, and otherwise conducting the Shady DTE's operations. He used his connections with Treetop Pyro leadership in California to obtain a supplier who, along with his associates, provided Shady and his crew with the drugs. They transported multi-kilogram quantities of the drugs from California to New Jersey by various means, including private aircraft and the United States mail. The crew then processed and repackaged the controlled substances at various stash houses in New Jersey. This included a residence on Ampere Parkway in Bloomfield, New Jersey, an apartment on Halsey Street in Newark, New Jersey, and an apartment on Ellington Street in East Orange, New Jersey. The gang members operating at the Ellington apartment and elsewhere would test the heroin coming from California to see if the heroin was of sufficient quality. Then it was packaged and distributed through some of the drugs through Bloods gang members in East Orange. Given his leadership status in the Bloods, his reputation for violence, and his supply of drugs, Shady exercised control over two local Bloods gang sets in East Orange, the Mob Pyrus and the Brick City Brims. The crew also transported some of the drugs from New Jersey to Maryland for further distribution. The Enterprise would use vehicles with specially designed secret compartments, commonly known as traps, to conceal and transport illegal narcotics, narcotics proceeds and firearms, including a white Lincoln Navigator, a blue Nissan and a reddish burgundy Porsche. They concealed the drug profits by setting up fake companies, and enlisted others to write checks to these fake companies, to make drug proceeds appear to be legitimate business proceeds. They also used drug proceeds to conduct transactions at casinos in Atlantic City city, to make it appear that the drug proceeds were legitimate. On or about September 13, 2013, Shady purchased a 2012 Porsche Panamera, with a total sales price of approximately $88,000. Shady used $29,200 in cash derived from drug proceeds as a down payment for the Porsche. Twelve days later, it was said that he was in possession of approximately $45,000 in drug proceeds. In mid-April the following year, 2014, Shady was involved in a drug deal. It was said that he dropped off approximately $60,000 in cash to the Ampere Parkway residence for the purchase of 2 kilograms of cocaine. The same day or so, Shady and co-conspirators Teddy and Mike D stored bags of marijuana, an amount of cocaine, numerous pills containing controlled substances, and approximately $65,000 in cash at the Ampere Parkway residence. Let's talk a little more about Teddy, as he is a crucial part of the story. Less than a week after Shady met with Teddy and Mike D, there was a raid. Teddy and Mike D were among 20 arrested following a year-long investigation into a multi-tiered narcotics distribution ring. A large amount of narcotics, mostly prescription drugs seized in cash, were confiscated as authorities raided about 12 locations in Essex and Union counties, including the Ampere Parkway residence, over that weekend. Teddy was charged with first-degree possession with intent to distribute more than 5 ounces of MDMA, also known as Molly, second-degree possession with intent to distribute more than 5 pounds of marijuana, and other charges. His bail was set at $300,000. Mike D was charged similarly, and his bail was set at $250,000. The investigation revealed a Grier Avenue location in Linden housed a fully functional heroin mill, the prosecutor's office said. The building was fortified with thick planks of wood mounted on the insides of doors and a comprehensive surveillance system. Similar surveillance systems were also in place at the Ampere Parkway location, as well as another. About $116,500 was seized as well as 4.5 kilograms of MDMA, 60 grams of crack cocaine, 140 grams of cocaine, 140 grams of heroin, 
14,000 counterfeit Viagra pills, and more than 100 bottles, containing a total of more than 10,000 units of various prescription pills. The drugs had a combined street value of more than $525,000. Two handguns and four vehicles, an Acura MDX, Chevy Tahoe, Mercedes-Benz sedan and a Jeep Grand Cherokee, were seized during the raids. So, Teddy was in the drug game, and was said to be in cahoots with members of the G-Shine Bloods, as they were also charged in the indictment. Keep him in mind. From what we know, Shady was not caught up in this indictment and was still on the streets getting to the bag. There were a few key things to note. On or about June 17, 2014, a crew member was in possession of $119,000 in drug proceeds at Newark Airport, prior to the associate boarding a flight to San Francisco, California. Almost a year later, on or about April 27, 2015, Shady deposited drug proceeds of approximately $43,521 in cash into a bank account he controlled for an LLC. On or about June 23, 2015, Shady deposited approximately $30,000 in $20 bills of drug proceeds into slot machines in a casino in Atlantic City. And a few weeks later, he did the same thing with $14,000. It's unclear how much time Teddy was sentenced to in connection to the 2014 raid. However, he was home in 2017 and back to doing business with guys like Shady. On or about June 9 of that year, Shady, Teddy and Jose stored cocaine and pills containing controlled substances at the Ampere Parkway residence. A few months later, in October 2017, Shady and Teddy and another guy Jose went to California for kilos of heroin and fentanyl for transportation back to New Jersey. The following month, another person, MR, purchased a private plane. Eventually, the Shady Enterprise leased an airplane hangar at the Monmouth Executive Airport in Wall, New Jersey. This hangar would be used to transport drugs later on. By in or around January 2018, Shady learned that Teddy was providing information to law enforcement officers relating to the Shady DT. Teddy detailed in an interview with special agents from the Drug Enforcement Administration that Shady had received 18 kilograms of cocaine, heroin and fentanyl from California in a shipment from California in or around late October 2017. Teddy also named Shady's co-conspirator, MR, as the person who received the narcotics from the California-based supplier and arranged for it to be sent to New Jersey. So what happens is, on or about February 1, 2018, MR used the plane he had purchased to transport approximately 1 kilogram of cocaine, 36 kilograms of marijuana, and approximately 1 kilogram of tramadol, a controlled substance used as a painkiller, which the Shady Enterprise believed to be fentanyl. Unfortunately for the crew, MR was arrested in Illinois around that same day with the drugs. Because of this, Shady put into motion his plan to prevent Teddy from further cooperation with law enforcement. Teddy was now a federal informant, undercover involving hostile gangs and drugs. Facilitated by Van's connection to Hadi and members of the Brick City Brims, and relying on his position within the Bloods gang and his role as drug supplier to the Brick City Brims, Shady directed Hadi, Bizzle, and YT to murder Teddy. On or about February 3, 2018, Shady met with two sets of the Blood Street Gang in a park in Orange, New Jersey, the Pyrus and the Brims. The murder was to go down today. That evening, township police found in an unspecified vehicle on the 200 block of Ampere Parkway, which is near the Chester Avenue. The person was shot an unspecified number of times and was pronounced dead at the scene. The following morning, Sunday, a man identifying himself as the victim's cousin, drove up to the corner where the body was found. He said he found out about his death through a friend of his cousin, and he wanted to see where his cousin was found. Turns out, the man was Juan Santos Martinez. Martinez was a construction worker who emigrated from the Dominican Republic in 1989 and recently became an American citizen. A 5 Series 4-door BMW was seen leaving the scene, and there was a $5,000 award put out for the arrest of the perps. The problem with this was that Martinez was an innocent bystander. Bizzle and YT, at the direction of Shady, shot and killed Martinez, believing him to be co-conspirator Teddy. It was a botched hit for now, but the efforts in catching Teddy didn't subside. 
Meanwhile, a couple days later, February 7, 2018, Shady had a co-conspirator deposit $12,500 cash, drug proceeds, into the bank account of an attorney based in Chicago, Illinois, who was representing co-conspirator MR on criminal charges relating to the narcotics seized from the plane a few days prior. Nothing else of much significant happens between that time and March 12, 2018. This would be the day that there would be another attempt by YT and Bizzle on Teddy's life. At about 8.30 a.m. that morning, police responded to reports of a shooting near Millbank Park on North 17th Street. Officers found an unresponsive male, later identified as Teddy, on the sidewalk. He suffered from apparent gunshot wounds and was pronounced dead at the scene shortly before 9 a.m. After the murder, Bizzle sent a text message to an unknown individual, confirming that the murder of Teddy was successfully completed. Before on or about May 31, 2018, defendants Hadi, Bizzle and YT, gave control over the firearm used to kill Teddy to an associate of the enterprise named DJ. DJ was stopped in a vehicle that contained approximately 612 glassine envelopes of heroin and the murder weapon. Over the next couple of days, Hadi and YT discussed the Teddy murder weapon being recovered by law enforcement. The gang's efforts in silencing the snitches wasn't over yet though. Remember Jose? It was said that he was dealing with drugs along with Teddy and Shady. On or about April 6, 2018, Shady, believing that Jose was cooperating with law enforcement, enlisted Van to drive a stolen vehicle Shady had obtained in order to shoot and kill Jose. That day, Shady and Van drove to a location along Parker Street in Newark, New Jersey, where Jose was sitting in a parked vehicle. Shady, using a rifle loaded with two two three rounds of ammunition, shot Jose multiple times, thereby resulting in Jose's death. Shortly after the murder, Shady and Van drove the stolen vehicle to a deserted spot under a highway in Newark, New Jersey. They then enlisted an associate to drive the navigator to pick them up and drive them away from the stolen vehicle. A few hours after the murder, Shady had Van enlisted another individual to go back to the location of the stolen vehicle under the highway and set the stolen vehicle on fire in order to conceal evidence of the murder of Jose. As we stated, there were two prominent blood sets that Shady was involved with. The Pyres and the Brick City Brims. It was said that in or about January 2018, a turf war had been brewing between the two sets. From that point, up until about June 2018, the Brick City Brims engaged in violence against the mob Pyrus over the control of drug territory. Ruger was a leader of the mob Pyru gang. Back in 2012, Ruger was arrested for the murder of Hamid Thomas, 18, of Orange. Thomas was killed on August 31, 2011, on the 200 block of Cleveland Street. This happened a day after Calry Pierre Jules, 23, was fatally beaten on the same block. The events were said to be unrelated though. Ruger would come home from that situation and was recognized as a leader. On Mother's Day, 2018, YT and at least one co-conspirator, a member of the Brick City Brims, planned to murder Ruger as part of the drug turf war and to further the goals of the Brick City Brims enterprise. That day, YT and his co-conspirator used a phone to call Ruger and arrange a meeting near Ruger's residence. According to authorities, gunfire violence erupted just before 1.15 p.m. in the 100 block of Oakwood Place, sending police to the scene where they found Ruger suffering a gunshot injury to the chest. He was rushed to University Hospital where doctors provided unsuccessful treatment to save his life. Ruger lost his fight for his life during the overnight hours. According to residents on Oakwood Place, the loud altercation broke out between Ruger and the male, her males, just before they heard more than a half dozen popping noises that were later confirmed as gunfire. Like probably every story on this channel, dealing with the gangs, they all get caught, or else we wouldn't be talking about them. The only other way out the game is in a body bag. You would be more than lucky to ride off into the sunset, especially after living a life of crime at this level. In the end, Bizzle was sentenced to 37 years in prison, YT was sentenced to 35 years in prison, and Hadi was sentenced to 25 years in prison. All of the defendants were also sentenced to 5 years of supervised release. But this about wraps this story up for this one. And as always, stay low and thanks for watching.